This right here, y'all, is OnePlus's most expensive phone ever. So I'm wondering if it's worth the price. Hey S'mores, I'm Shannon Morse and I do tech reviews and tutorials. Welcome to Morse Code. If you are looking for in-depth tech and gadget content, you have come to the right place. If you are new here, subscribe to become a part of this awesome community and make sure to check out my Patreon and buy me a coffee links below to see how you can support this channel. I also wanted to thank my newest s'mores, including on Buy Me A Coffee, Flying Piggy, John and Invisible Thrill, and everybody who supports me over on Patreon who just so happen to get access to early topic releases, a private travel map, and a whole lot more from me as well as the community. So this is the new OnePlus 8 Pro. It costs $899 for the 8 gig RAM, 128 gig version, which comes in glacial green. There's also one that costs $999. So after tax, you're going to pay over a grand for a OnePlus phone. That one has 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. That option comes in onyx black or ultramarine blue. Now this one is available now if you can find it in stock and it weighs seven ounces. The dimensions are 165.3 millimeters by 74.3 millimeters by 8.5 millimeters. So it's a little bit bigger than the OnePlus 8. In the box, you get the phone, a power adapter and the cable, a SIM ejector tool, logo stickers, a case, and a screen protector, which is not pre installed. Now mine did not include the screen protector. However, if you look online, it is supposed to. So keep that in mind. The beautiful front display on this thing is made out of 3D Corning Gorilla Glass, while the back is made out of contoured matte AG glass finish with a metal band in between. Now the matte black resists fingerprints really, really well. It's very, very pretty and it's got kind of a muted color to it. The cameras do protrude and they are a little bit larger than the one plus eight. So you will notice it if you put your hand back there. It's quite noticeable. I mean, they protrude quite a bit back there. They're pretty big. On the bottom, there is USB 3.1 Gen 1 type C. There's also a dual nano SIM slot. And on the sides, you get your alert slider, your volume and your power button. There's also dual speakers. And this phone is IP68 water resistant, which means that you can dump it for one meter for 30 minutes and you should be just fine. Let's talk about about this beautiful display here. It is a 6.78 inch quad HD fluid AMOLED display with a 120 hertz refresh rate. You also get HDR10 plus support, which looks amazing with HDR content. And it also has MEMC, which is motion estimation, motion compensation support included. Now that means that it upscales 24 FPS videos all the way up to 120 FPS. In the settings, it's called motion graphics smoothing, and that can be turned turned on in the settings and it works in full screen videos on YouTube, Netflix, Prime Video and your gallery. You can also drop down to 60 Hertz or full HD plus in the settings too, if you need to save some battery life. Now the resolution is 3168 by 1440 and that is at 513 pixels per inch. So you will notice that it is more compact than the one plus eight as far as the pixels per inch. This aspect ratio is also a little bit different. It is 19 0.8 by 9. That means that it's going to be comfortable. It is slim, but it does have accurate colors on the display. You can turn up the pop in the settings, just like on the OnePlus 8. That means that you can turn on the setting called Vivid, as well as another one called Vibrant Colors Effect, which gives you this much more saturated feel on your screen. But if you leave everything normal, the colors and the accuracy are totally on point on this display. It is really, really stunning. It also has TUV eye comfort certification for reducing harmful blue light. And just like previous OnePlus devices, you can always turn on reading mode or night mode. There's also a vibrant color mode as well. And this one does have a very, very bright screen. So if you go outside and you're using this in sunlight, you can turn it up to the max brightness, which is 1300. That's insane. That's really, really bright. Now you will likely want to keep the auto brightness enabled just like on the OnePlus 8 because it does get extremely bright, especially on like white screens. The screen to body ratio size is 
0.36%. And if I turn this into the settings, you can kind of see it a little bit better. There are black bezels along the phone on the edges, but they are just slightly less obvious than the OnePlus 8. And the phone is slightly taller as well. So they're not as noticeable. There's also an ambient display, which is highly customizable down to the lighting, just like the OnePlus 8. And that is called Horizon Light. That glows along with your notifications. And again, with this one, I also made it purple because it's my favorite color. It is a polarized display, so it does work quite well in the sunlight. Now there is also palm rejection technology built into this too. That means that the OnePlus 8 Pro does a very good job of rejecting accidental screen touches from your palm along the edges. So if you're holding this with one hand, you don't have to worry so much about accidentally opening up an application when you didn't want to. The cameras on the back are a little bit different from the OnePlus 8. You still get the dual LED flash, but there is no macro camera. Instead, you get a 48 megapixel ultra wide angle camera at 120 degrees field of view. That one has an F2.2 aperture. There's also a 48 megapixel main camera at F1.78 aperture, and that one's 1 1.12 to 2.24 micrometer pixel size. There's also an eight megapixel three times telephoto camera with 30 times digital zoom. That one has an F2.44 aperture and a 1.0 micrometer pixel size with OIS built in. And there's also this kind of interesting gimmicky one. It's a five megapixel color filter lens at F2.4 aperture. Now you do get ultra shot HDR on here, nightscape, super micro, portraits, pro mode, panorama, AI scene detection, raw image support, and you also get that smart pet capture. Now in my experience with the OnePlus 8 Pro main camera, it's quite good with daylight. The white balance looks very good. It's not overblown. Colors are very vibrant, very pretty, but they are accurate. There's also auto HDR. It does a really good job of bringing out the colors from the shadows. The photos are generally quite sharp. And when I tested an ultra wide shot, the photos were sharp all the way to the edges and they were balanced and they had very natural colors as well. Now the three time zoom was sharp all the way to the highest setting and the photos and colors were very natural. However, once you get into those digital zooms, then you lose a lot of the quality and you can definitely tell when you get up to like 20 times or 30 times zoom. I'm very pleased with the portrait mode on this phone. The subjects were again, clearly defined from the background bokeh and the images are very sharp as well. Now the low light night mode, I was quite impressed with how much detail the OnePlus 8 Pro was able to capture in my nighttime photos. Without this mode turned on, pictures during a dark setting were just kind of meh. They were dark and they were not worth sharing because you couldn't see any detail. But with it, they were bright, they were sharp. The details were very much included. Now, even though this smartphone does not include a macro lens, I actually found, and I think you'll agree with me when you check out some example photos, the macro mode on this is better than the one on the OnePlus 8. Smart Pet capture also makes fur on my cats naturally sharper, much more clearly defined than a normal photo from a smartphone would. Now I know that the color filter camera did get a lot of press lately because people were saying that you could like see through things and that's a kind of a privacy issue, uh, which I can agree with, but the way that it works is basically using IR and using infrared to see colors and to see through plastics and things like that to be able to to kind of show you what they look like from a human eye. It's pretty interesting and it's definitely gimmicky. It's not something that I would use all the time. So I feel like that's almost wasted space on the back and they should have included not only a telephoto camera, but also maybe a macro camera as well. It would be nice to have both lenses. Now, overall, the back cameras did capture sharpness, accurate, not saturated colors and very, very lovely bokeh for portraits. As far as videos go, you get 4K video at 30 or 60, as well as 1080p at 30 or 60. You can also do slow-mo at 720p 480 or 1080p 240. For time lapses, you can do 1080p 30 or 40K at 30. Now you also get EIS and OIS for stabilization. So your videos do come out looking very, very good. There's also the cinematic mode, which gives you a different aspect ratio for recording. This gives you a much wider view that is much more cinematic, kind of like a movie. In my video demos, I noticed the OIS and EIS make the videos very, very stable and the autofocus does a great job whenever I was moving from subject to subject. The dynamic 
range looks really good. The white balance is great and the colors have a very accurate color and contrast. And there isn't too much white balance auto correction going on whenever I was moving from scene to scene. This is an audio and stabilization test on the OnePlus 8 Pro with some construction noise in the background. Let's see how it sounds and see how it looks. The front camera is 16 megapixels, and that's 1.0 microns with an f2.45 aperture, and that one also includes electronic image stabilization. You also get 1080p 30fps, and you can also do time lapse. Now, there is face unlock included, as well as HDR, screen flash, and face retouching as well, but of course, you can change those as you see fit. The selfie camera was very pleasing as well for the most part. Photos were very clear, they were very accurate as far as the colors go with some increase in contrast and saturation and I did notice again with this phone very similar to the OnePlus 8 sometimes the whites in my pictures would get blown out like in my mask but this only happened occasionally so if I took more than one photo during a scene I would notice that change a little bit the portraits look really great I took some here in my studio and I noticed that I definitely stand out from my background which is great and when I was testing some videos I actually made this little demo so you can check out the audio for yourself. This is a test of the OnePlus 8 Pro camera, front-facing camera. See how the audio sounds and see how the stabilization looks. We do have some construction and noise of cars in the background, so we'll see how it looks. Yay! Since this has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 865, which is quite standard for this year's phone lineups, I noticed that it is very, very snappy. You also get up to 12 gigs of RAM and that 256 gigs of storage, but there is no SD card support in here, just the dual SIM slot, so no SD card. So you're stuck with whatever storage you choose to get. There's also an Adreno 650 GPU, and I did test this one again with 3D Mark, and I got an average test score of 7140, which is pretty similar to the OnePlus 8. Every video game that I played on here, including games like Pokemon Go, everything played with no hiccups, which I was not surprised about given that it has quite a bit of RAM. It is very powerful as well. There is a haptic vibration engine in here, so you do feel that nice vibrational feedback, and it has been increased in this phone from the previous generations. Now, Oxygen OS is OnePlus's operating system that's built on top of Android 10. You do get that dark theme 2.0, dynamic wallpapers, zen mode, you get all the customizations that you could ever imagine, you get gestures, pretty much everything you would want for Android is included in the Oxygen OS, which I really appreciate. Now kind of a negative is the fact that while they do have two years of major software upgrades and three years of security patches, which is great because you can keep this phone for a long time and be secure, those only come every two months instead of every month, which is a bit of an unfortunate memo to make. Bloatware is very, very minor on this phone too. OnePlus has a whole folder dedicated to their own applications, including a community, there's game space, but generally it's pretty clean. As far as security goes, face unlock is included on this phone too, and it gives you this nice fluid animation whenever you're unlocking to the home screen. I thought that was kind of nice. You do have to turn on the screen for the face unlock to work with either a double clicking of a tap or clicking the power button. Now it only works with your eyes open, but this is not as secure as Face ID on Apple or the face unlocking technology on the Pixel 4 because it uses a less sophisticated technology. OnePlus uses the 2D face unlock as opposed to some other option. So on the other hand, you can use the in-display fingerprint sensor instead, which is quite secure. This is similar to previous generations of OnePlus phones. It is very fast, and I like that you can customize that animation effect. Now, it would be really cool if you could change the color as well, so I could make mine like pink, like my background lighting back here. I thought that would be cool. But it does have a really nice big green icon, so whenever you're just getting started with this phone, it's very easy to find where you need to put your hand. For connectivity, you get 4G, 5G, Wi-Fi 6, NFC, and dual sim. Now dual speakers are included. Those are also Dolby Atmos supported and surprisingly clear. They have no distortion whenever I was turning this up to the highest volume. Very similar to a 
its little brother. And it does lack base, just like the OnePlus 8 as well, just like most smartphones do. Now, I still prefer when both speakers face the front, since I tend to cover up the bottom speaker with my finger whenever I hold it in my left hand. Another option is using Bluetooth 5.1. In this phone, that includes AppDex, AppDex HD, LDAC, AAC, and SBC. My connections did not falter while I was moving around my household and away from the phone when I had some earbuds plugged in, so I had no issues. If you do want to use earbuds, your only option is going to be wireless or USB-C compatible ones because there is no headphone jack on the top or the bottom. So that's kind of a bummer. Call quality with Google Fi here was excellent. I had no issues whenever I was using this phone in Denver. Now this phone also has Warp Charge 30T, which is five volts, six amps. That means you can get about 50% charge in 23 minutes. It's also packing a very nice battery. It's a 4510 milliamp per hour battery and it does also include 30 watt wireless charging. That means you can get 1% to 50% in about half an hour. Now it can work on Qi compatible wireless chargers, but definitely not at the same speeds as it can with its own wireless charger. You can also do reverse wireless charging for compatible devices. So if you have a Qi wireless charging capable phone or some kind of accessory, you can lay it on the phone and the OnePlus 8 Pro will charge your device. So I love the fact that you can use reverse wireless charging. I think that's so useful. Now here's a screenshot of the battery life after I've been using it for a full work day and that is with 120 Hertz enabled, all of the top of the line specs included in the settings turned on. So the OnePlus 8 Pro, the most expensive OnePlus phone we have ever gotten. They've almost, almost breached $1,000 USD and they are very, very close to that price point. But are they a flagship? Do you consider OnePlus to now be a flagship or should they go back to what the CEO was kind of hinting at on Twitter a little while back, a mid-range pricing? This is definitely one of my favorite phones that has come out so far in the year 2020. I think it's a wonderful option, but again, it is rather expensive. So I would love to know if that premium feel, the wireless charging, the excellent cameras are something that would make you want to purchase this or if you would choose to save some money and go with something that's less expensive. If you want to upgrade from OnePlus 7, what is making you upgrade? I would love to know down below in the comments. Thank you again to my s'mores for subscribing and for watching. I hope you enjoyed this very, very detailed review. I'm Shannon Morris, and I will see you very soon. Bye, y'all.